The neural glia of the peripheral nervous system includes the swan cells and the satellite cells. I don't test on the satellite cells very often. I want to mention what they are. They are this collection of cell bodies that uh, are found in the peripheral nervous system and they uh, protect so that what they do is they surround these cell bodies and they protect them. They have an important job to do and you can actually see these satellite cells out here and so this entire cell w body would actually be surrounded by these things. Um, and so it's not that they're not important or interesting but in terms of my focused attention we will primarily be looking at the swan cells and I am going to be talking about how those swan cells form uh, myelin sheaths and per, uh, participate in axonal repair. So you'll recall that the oligodendrocytes form the myelin sheaths in the neuron. An, al an oligodendrocyte has many arms that wrap around several different er neurons and so each different axonal segment, the, the small segment is formed by one arm of an oligodendrocyte. Here we have a slightly different situation in that each segment, so this segment from here to here, for example, is made of just one swan cell. And you'll notice that they're not branched at all. It's a single swan cell that wraps around that particular segment of axon, which means this one is another swan cell, and this one is another swan cell, and you get the idea, so on and so forth. Each of these would be swan cells that wrap around the axon. And these cells wrap many, many, many times around the axon. And you can see these different layers that are being uh, of, of uh, these, these wraps, these uh, wrapping around the axon. And what those are is essentially cell membrane. Many, many layers of plasma membrane from the swan cell. If we look at this in closer detail, here's how that myelin section forms. We start out with our happy little swan cell. Here's my nucleus right here. Okay. And like all sw cells, it's going to have a cell membrane. It's going to contain cytoplasm, other structures within that cytoplasm. And it's going to start by wrapping around this single axon right here. And for starters, we're just going to have one layer here. And then it'll wrap around a second time, and a third, and a fourth, and a fifth. And as it wraps, all of this cytoplasm that is contained within the cell gets squished and squished out. And the liquid portion of that cytoplasm gets forced out of the way so that we virtually have no fluid between those layers of plasma membrane that are formed all from the same cell as it wraps again and again and again around the axon. The plasma membrane, um, or I'm sorry, the cytoplasm is eventually squished into one little pocket that surrounds the neuron, um, the nucleus. And so most of the cytoplasm gets squished to this region right here. And the rest of the cell, the liquid portion, is squeezed out. Plasma membrane makes an excellent, excellent insulator. And consequently, the purpose of myelin sheaths, both in the peripheral nervous system and in the central nervous system, are to insulate these axons to prevent the electrical signal that is passing through these axons from diffusing into the extracellular fluid. So they have a very important job to do. Unmyelinated axons, um, still have material, material around them to stabilize them, but the process looks a little different. Instead of having the myelin sheath wrapped around them over and over and over again, we get one swan cell, and you can see each of these swan cells are going to hold and loosely cushion each of these axons. So these would be from a different neuron. Remember that nerves are bundles of neurons and in particular of nerve axons. That's what a nerve is. And so these would hold these bundles of axons together loosely, but you'll notice that they're not wrapped several times. They're not insulated and protected by all these multiple layers. 
We do have non-myelinated or unmyelinated axons and myelinated axons both in the central and um, the central and peripheral nervous system. The primary difference between these types of axons, whether they're myelinated or unmyelinated, is the speed of conduction. Electrical signals travel much, much faster through myelinated axons. And what they do is they travel, the electricity is generated, and we'll talk about this in more detail. But um, in simple, as simple as we can get, the electricity, the electrical signal will be generated at this initial segment of axon. Okay. And it swoops through this myelin. And then you can see my node of Ranvier right there. Let's go ahead and switch to red because I think red will be easier to see. Here's my red one signal. And my node of Ranvier here refreshes that electric signal and then it swoops through the, ac the myelin, gets refreshed, swoops on through, and that's essentially how it travels. And it's actually a very, very fast conductance of this electrical signal. It's quite rapid. Whereas in the uh, unmyelinated axon, It'll still travel through electrical conduction, but it has to journey through each segment of the axon. As mentioned, we will talk about this in more detail, but this is slower, and myelinated axons are faster.